Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Vendo Velocity. I'm your host, Delaney Del Mundo, and we're excited to have you back with us today. Um, we're going to be going through a really fun topic, and it is the Try Before You Buy program. But without further ado, I'll speak on what Vendo Velocity is if it's your first time joining us. Uh, Vendo Velocity is your weekly live podcast that talks about all things walmart.com, amazon.com, and TikTok shop. So with me today, I actually have a newbie to the podcast who I'm very excited to introduce, Mickey, who's one of our Amazon account strategists here. So Mickey, why don't you give a little bit of background on, on your role? I'm very excited to have you here today. Hey, Delaney. Uh, super excited to be on the podcast here for the first time. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Mickey. And I am an Amazon account strategist here at Vendo. Um, I am a newbie at Vendo too, but I have been managing uh, on Amazon accounts for over 14 years. So uh, seeing both sides of the business on Amazon as a prime buyer, as well as managing uh, accounts for sellers. So from both ends of the spectrum. So super excited to be here talking about this program today here with Delaney. Yeah, absolutely. And Mickey's actually managed her own brand. So uh, very excited to have a unique perspective here, both on the agency side and then um, also just brand management as a, as a true seller to the platform. Um, but just to give a little bit of context to everyone on what uh, Prime Try Before You Buy is, I'll let Mickey introduce the program in a second. But it used to be called uh, Prime Wardrobe. Um, and that term was a little bit confusing to shoppers because I think a lot of shoppers compared it to Amazon's or not Amazon's compared it to the rent the one runway program. And if anyone's familiar with rent the runway, it's a subscription clothing service um, that a lot of um, people within the fashion industry would promote. But also it's just a great way to subscribe to, to different clothing without necessarily having to buy it. Um, so when Amazon rebranded from Prime Wardrobe to Prime Before, uh, Try Before You Buy It, um, that made it a little bit clear because it's literally in the name of what it is. So Mickey, why don't you give us a little bit of context on what is the uh, Prime Try Before You Buy program? Definitely. Um, so basically, it's a program that Amazon offers uh, exclusively to Prime members. Um, and it allows buyers to try eligible items. And these are items specifically from your women's, men's, kids um, categories, the baby clothing, shoes. Um, and what it does, it allows buyers or your prime members to buy these items and keep them or try them on for seven days. Um, and basically, there's no fees to customers to try this program. And there are limits to how many items they can actually purchase. Um, but the great thing about it for buyers is they're able to try these items and then return them just as they would with any other items that are not charged during those seven days. Um, in the program itself, when you're trying to find these items, Amazon does mark them with a try before prime try before you buy logo. So it makes it clear with which items are actually eligible and available for customers through this program. Yeah. And, and that's a great point in what you said, just because I think, with clothing specifically, a lot of shoppers, I, I know myself until probably about two years ago, were more hesitant to buy any sort of clothing online just because of different sizing. Like I think if I don't shop from very select stores, then I'm probably not going to get a size uh, that actually fits me. And then I'm just going to have to go out of my way to return it anyways. So this really allows you to, even before your card is charged, uh, try the product and see how you like it there. Now, um, Mickey, from a seller's perspective, how do you go about enrolling products in these programs? Like, is it automatic or is that something that you have to do manually? So exactly. Sellers cannot actually enroll in this manually. You have to become eligible for it. And so Amazon has their own sort of selection process based on past sales history and things like that. Um, so they will let you know through email um, as a seller if you become eligible for the program. Unfortunately, it's not really something that you can, as a seller, go in and check off or toggle a box saying, I want to enroll. But once you're enrolled, you have the opportunity to select which products you want to enroll, if you want to be part of the program or not. Um, so that's just a great thing about it once you do get eligible for it. Perfect. And then you have around 30 days or so to actually accept that invitation. So um, that gives you a little bit of time to weigh the pros and cons there. 
Um, how about as far as products specifically? Can most brands who sell within this category in, in the clothing category assume that all of their products are going to be eligible or um, are there certain criteria behind that? No, there are definitely criteria. So there are, for example, you have the footwear, you have the apparel categories. Um, they have to fit into the standard packaging for them to meet this eligibility. Um, there are some items, for example, your underwear that is not going to be eligible under the try before you brought a uh, try before you buy um, program. So they do have some eligibility um, in terms of which category and which products that you can add to the program. And then Amazon will let you know which ones are going to be eligible. So once you are enrolled in the program, you have the option to go in and take a look at which of your products. So you may have a huge catalog of clothes or um, items, accessories, um, but not all of them may necessarily be included or eligible for the program. Got it. And then you have that full choice in terms of which specific products after they're eligible to enroll or um, how do you go about the actual enrollment of it? Correct. So once you go are, uh, become eligible for the program, there's actually a, a link that you can go to, which shows you all the app, uh, the products that you have that are eligible. And you can actually select which ones you want to enroll in the program. Um, so it's pretty simple. Once you are eligible for the program, just go in, take a look at which products they have. Amazon has allowed you to put into the program and you can sort of check them in or check them out um, pretty easily. Um, sure. in terms of, yeah. Enrolling. And then how about if you no longer want products enrolled in that program? Is that something that's very easy and uh, quick to just unenroll? Or is it something that um, Amazon is going to enable or make you keep the, those products in that program for a certain duration? No. So you can pretty much un unroll your products at any time. So it's really up to you. Once you are eligible, once your products are eligible, you can decide if you want them enrolled or not. So if you feel like there's a product that is just maybe, you know, selling too much and getting too many returns, you can go in and unroll that product. So it's pretty simple to do. Perfect. And then, yes, as far as opting in and out of the program specifically, um, you can contact Amazon directly at fba dash tbyb-help. So that's another place in which you could get that direct uh, help to, to the program um, if you want to just review which products are pre-selected or if you want to um, enroll, opt-in, opt-out, et cetera. So uh, that's very important there. And so as a seller, Mickey, if we're thinking about this, we're like, okay, this seems almost like a no-brainer. What, what, what are the strings attached here? Like, are there a ton of fees behind this? How are sellers being charged? Um, so can you speak a little bit in terms of what fees sellers can expect to be charged for uh, Prime Try Before You Buy? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, one of the, the cons, I guess, would be that you have to be invited into the program. But once you're in there, um, one of the things that you have to understand is that um, there are no fees for the program itself. Um, so you would be charged any typical FBA fees, any sort of uh, referral fees that were uh, charged for any order. The only difference is that during the seven days that a customer is trying that product, you're not charged anything. Um, you're basically just charged a referral fee. And if the customer returns that item within the seven days, there is no FBA fee charged to you. There is no refund administration fee that Amazon normally charges for any traditional order. So in a way, it's a real benefit to a seller if they have this program eligible for their products. Um, if the customer returns the item within the seven day trial period. Now, if you go past the seven day trial period, and then the customer um, initiates the return, then it becomes like any other order. So the, uh, the seller is charged the same refund administration fee, they're charged the same FBA fee. So the benefit really comes from the, the customer returning the item within the seven days. And anybody who's buying this through the Tribe Before You Buy program, any customer who's using it, they'd want to do that because during that time, they're also not being charged for this order basically. Got it. That's awesome. And then hopefully that incentivizes people to just return product within those seven days and not wait any longer because then you'll be charged those other fees that um, Mickey was alluding to there. Um, so now we're pretty sold. We are going to enroll our products in Try Before You Buy. Um, but I just want a better understanding as a seller on if I can expect my return rates to start to increase. 
you'd think naturally because there is this week-long window uh, that you're going to see return rates go up because more consumers are just simply trying your product. Maybe they're not actually interested in making that in purchase or they're not completely sold uh, on that product. So is that a fair assumption in that you should expect some of these return rates to increase, especially within that first week? Yes. So because this program does give sellers, uh, buyers the opportunity to sort of try out these products, um, it does mean that buyers tend to buy sort of a little more than they would normally buy. For example, different sizes, different colors. Now, there is a limit to how many they can purchase in each order. Um, the number of units is only six right now. And that obviously can change. Um, so that does limit how many a customer can buy. But the the thing is, with that number of orders that they are they are getting, there is a higher chance of your returns going up. But the benefit is that any customer that does keep their product longer than the seven day period, most likely that customer is not going to return that order. So we do see that anybody who does keep it past the purchase date, the seven days, there's not going to be a return, which means for sellers, you really are reducing your fees from your FBA fees and your refund administration fees, because those are not charged as long as the, the buyer returns the item within the seven days. Yeah, that's a really good point there. And then I think one of the other potential cons that sellers might be thinking through is just like, okay, maybe they are returning my product within that seven day period. And based on how they've uh, interacted with the product and how it gets shipped back, it might get damaged in transit. So now you're having this product that is now returned, but then gets deemed as unsellable by Amazon because maybe there's some wear and tear of the product and either how the consumer interacted with it in that very short window or just within the, the fulfillment or the shipping process there. So right. uh, what would you say to, to something like that, Mickey? Is that like a fair concern there or is that something um, where ultimately we're not going to see as much inventory shift to unsellable? So one of the things that Amazon does as part of this program is any return, uh, they expect returns to be in a certain format. So for example, if it was sent in a bag with a label attached, that's exactly how you need to return it. So items can't be returned worn and used. Amazon does assess any returns that comes back to them. And if they are returned in a condition that's not acceptable, they will flag those um, and also flag customers for doing things like that. So in a way, sellers are protected. Um, from items being completely damaged or being unsellable from the from these returns. Got it. And then is this program uh, completely included within just like typical FBA services or are there any like promotional activities or specific pricing that you can implement just specifically for uh, Try Before You Buy? Right. So try before you buy is completely an FBA program. So you do have to be a prime member to be able to buy through the try before you buy. Um, in terms of any incentives or specials, there are none. Your pricing is basically going to be like any of your other FBA products. So any discounts or promotions that you're running typically um, on that particular product will apply exactly the same to your try before you buy. So there is no different pricing. There is no special promotions. Uh, the only difference is the fact that it's a separate program that does allow customers to try items essentially um, for those seven days. Very cool. Okay. Um, I'm curious to see if they end up developing any sort of promotion specific to try before you buy just to encourage uh, more users to, to shop their, the clothing category there. Um, but that will be interesting as it develops with time. Um, what about as far as shipping? Are you shipping this product? Obviously, you're shipping the product directly into the Amazon fulfillment centers. But right. are all fulfillment centers going to be enabled for try before you buy? Is it only going to be specific fulfillment centers that are actually able uh, to send out this stock? How does that work? Um, so the way Amazon has it set up right now is they have only specific fulfillment centers um, that do ful fulfillment for the try before you buy program. So if your inventory runs out at those specific fulfillment centers, the try before you buy program will be switched off until the inventory comes back, but it'll still be available for FBA, your traditional FBA purchase, um, as long as you have inventory at the other fulfillment centers. Got it. And then, uh, so that's super helpful to note in which it will just completely turn off for those. Is it, is it turn off for those specific fulfillment centers or is it just turn off in general? 
Um, it's going to turn it off in general. You're not going to be able to try before you buy because if it's not at the specific fulfillment center, they can't do the try before you buy. Got it. Understood. Okay. And then I know that you feel a certain way about the reporting, Mickey, but would love to uh, understand some of the limitations around reporting. What sorts of insights do we have uh, to try before you buy orders? And what do you see as kind of Amazon's biggest areas of opportunity when it comes to assessing uh, your sales through this program? Um, so the way the Try Before You Buy program works right now is uh, when a customer places an order, you will see this in your order reports. Um, it, I'm sorry, on your order page. It will show up as on trial um, on the as, as the status of the order. Um, you cannot find these in your transaction reports once the order is returned within the seven days. So it becomes really tricky if you're trying to really find orders uh, that would try before you buy that customers actually return. So you cannot really find those in your transaction report. But once a report, once an order is actually completed and completed basically means that the customer has kept it past that seven days, then that order can be found in your transaction report. You can search by the acronym TBYB for try before you buy. And then those orders will show up as your try before you buy orders. Now, from a reporting standpoint, you know, it is a little tricky with Amazon. Um, so what I found is that Amazon doesn't really give you good reporting in terms of what products are eligible um, for the program. And even those that are don't show properly in the reporting that they have. So we're still working through this right now with Amazon. Um, we have cases open with them, but um, we have kind of figured out the main logistics in terms of how they show up on your order status, as well as on the transaction report. So it can get confusing because when you're looking for, a trans um, for an order in the transaction report, you can't find it. Um, it's just because that order is never really charged to anybody. So you don't get once an order is returned within the seven days, there's essentially no fees charged to you as a seller. You don't get any referral fees. You don't get any FBA fees. There's no refund administration fee. So it's almost like that order never really happened, but you can see it on your orders page if you look for it. Got it. Okay, cool. And then You've had a lot of experience here, um, Mickey, with this program. How do you typically approach it? Is it something where um, brands are more hesitant to enroll their products and try before you buy? Are there certain products that they're more willing to? Or most of the time, from what you've seen, it's any product that's eligible, let's make sure that it's included because it seems like a great opportunity for brand exposure, uh, more flexibility for the prime shopper, et cetera. Yeah, um, so it is it is kind of a hit or miss. I mean, one of the biggest problems uh, convincing brands is more about, you know, the fact that there is a risk of the higher returns um, and the possibility of the returns being sort of unsellable, like we talked about earlier. So, you know, brands are very concerned about that. Um, but the ones that I have been working with so far, it has worked really well because we're seeing that orders that do go through and stay past the seven days, those customers are actually enjoying the product and not returning it. We have seen returns that have come through, but I think those customers would have bought and returned anyways. So the benefit to the brand has actually really been just saving on those refund administration fees and the FBA fees, which are huge. You know, when you look at it, when you add those up, those can be pretty significant. Um, so I think overall, we've been we've been pretty happy with our brands for these programs for who have been able to enroll in the program and um, use them. Yeah, and I think to Mickey's point there, one of the biggest, of course, um, areas of negative feedback is all around the size of the product majority of the time. Um, so it is really important through the content and every aspect of the PDP that you're really relaying some of the key selling points of the product, but also, that size charts are very important within Q and A's within a plus content that you're relaying uh, different measurements there. And that it's very clear uh, what size, depending on height and weight um, and maybe like waist size, et cetera, it would fit best for. So that would of course limit the returns. Um, and then on top of that, I feel like another great opportunity is just during peak periods like a prime day or like any sort of, main tentpole event on Amazon, when you are enrolled in this Try Before You Buy program already, um, it does apply any sort of deals that you're offering. So lightning deals, best deals, deals of the day, PEDs, all of that that you're already offering during on your product during that time, 
uh, try before you buy will still be eligible. So that gives you even more opportunity to uh, kind of gain a new customer to your brand there and uh, maybe shop additional categories down the line. Um, but Mickey, it sounds like you're pretty bullish in this program on this program as am I. So are there any other sorts of insights that you want to share with our audience here as we close? Um, I think the only thing that I'd like to add is that, you know, once you are eligible, I highly recommend, you know, sellers do try it out. Um, you know, the concerns about the returns, those are extremely valid. Um, you know, anybody, you know, there's no seller that wants to see a high rate of returns, but I think overall, just being able to save on those admin fees, the return fees, the FBA fees, those fees in themselves, because I feel like customers, Amazon has given this platform where they are able to do this, where they're able to buy and just return at will when they please. All this does is protects the seller in a way that items are returned in a certain condition before the seller buyers are given their refunds back, as well as protects sellers from these fees that they would have accumulated without the program. So my opinion, I think it's kind of like a no brainer. Um, but at the same time, um, it, it, we just kind of have to see how it goes depending on brands and how they do specifically. And if there's a specific item that isn't doing so well, the ability to be able to en unenroll it just kind of makes this program easy to use. Yep, absolutely. Well, great insights that Mickey has shared here today. I'm sure we'll make her come back on the Vendor Velocity podcast soon uh, to review a different topic, but appreciate everyone for tuning in today and we'll see you next week on Vendor Velocity. Thanks, Mickey. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.